There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from Xtrades, back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday and also had a good trading week last week. It was relatively quiet in the stock market. I would say Monday was probably the best day. Market did break out a little bit, including SPY and QQQ. Both had about a 1% day or more. And the rest of the week was kind of slow and choppy just due to holidays and you know, the volume kind of dies down once you get closer to Thanksgiving. It's just how it is. So hopefully this week, the volume will come back. A little bit more activity will pick up. Markets are a little bit overextended on the index end, but there are some discounts still in the market that maybe look good to the long side. But as well, it's starting to get cheap to hedge. If you want to pick up some puts, the VIX is hitting 52-week lows, hitting lows we haven't seen in years. So... The cost of hedge is just so cheap right now because nobody is buying puts. So if you buy time on them, it could be a good trade for a potential pullback coming up relatively soon. But we'll have to see. Usually December is pretty bullish. so And then we're kind of closing out the month relatively bullish as well, I'm guessing, just due to seasonality and also low volatility. But before we get into the setups, let's go ahead and get into the economic calendar real quick. All right, Monday, November 27th, we do have new home sales. It's at 10 a.m. Tuesday, most important is going to be the consumer confidence. Pay attention to that at 10 a.m. And then we have a bunch of Fed speakers as well. That's always a hit or miss if it's going to move us or not. It just depends on how hawkish or dovish they sound. And then Wednesday, GDP and also another Fed speaker and the Fed beige book at 2 p.m. Just pay attention to the GDP at 8.30. Thursday, the most important day of the week. We do the PCE index. This is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. They prefer this over the CPI. As well as we have personal spending, personal income, and our usual initial jobless claims coming in that same day. Other thing we do have is pending home sales at 10 a.m. That's always a fun one. And also Chicago business barometer which is also a pmi reading so most importantly it's going to be the pce and then obviously personal spending and personal income give us a look into how inflation is going and how the fight against inflation is going for the fed so pay attention to that on thursday it's going to be the most important day of the week and then friday some more fed speakers most importantly it's going to be the ism manufacturing this is always a pretty big one and it hits 30 minutes after the open. So you will see that mid-session volatility potentially, depending on how extreme the reading is for the ISM manufacturing. And then Fed Chair Jerome Powell is also speaking, but I doubt it's going to be anything special. He's going to be at Spelman College. I think it's just some fireside chat probably with probably some employees from the college or somebody. I'm not exactly sure. And I highly doubt he's going to comment much on monetary policy or really anything that's going to, you know, make the markets go up or down much. So pay attention to it just in case, because you never know with Jerome Powell. But also at the same time, don't expect too much just because it's, it's not a real FOMC meeting and it's really not anything special. And I highly doubt he's going to really say anything new that we don't already know. So that's for the economic calendar. Most important day is going to be Thursday as well as Friday for the ISM manufacturing with the potential for Jerome Powell being important, but I highly doubt that. Also, I think the GDP could move us a little bit as well. And then consumer confidence on Tuesday. So those are going to be your most important data sets of the week. And for seasonality, this is going to be the last 21 years worth of data for November. You can see we're coming up into, it's going to be the 27th tomorrow. So we're right here on the historical scale. You can see the month does kind of close out a little bit bullish. It was supposed to kind of stall out here for pre-election years, which we are in a pre-election year, but markets still did pretty good. We didn't really see too much of a stall out in November at all. We had one pullback basically the whole month and otherwise we've been very, very bullish, but we are kind of starting to get to that inflection point in the market. I definitely don't want to just go long up here. I'm waiting for a pullback to buy. Uh, if I'm going to you know, get a spy swing trade for calls or QQQ, anything like that. Otherwise, I'm kind of looking for individual tickers and I'm still willing to swing calls in those kind of tickers that are maybe a little bit oversold. They're starting to hit their bottoms. So there's a lot of oversold names and lots of discounts still in the market. All right, and on to the setup. So I'll try to go over them relatively quick. We do have JWN here. This is my first one. You can see it closed up almost 6% on the day, which you might want to be careful with. Obviously, chasing after a stock that's already moved almost 6% can be a hit or miss, but you know, maybe look for a pullback. But as well as we want to see that move over 1518, which is this level right here. You need to see a one day close over that. If we do get that one day close, there's pretty much free space to resistance at 1653. 
53. If we add the moving averages here, you can see we're starting to close over the 50 EMA, the one day 50 EMA for the first time in a couple months. So this is probably the last time we were closing over the 50 EMA right here in August. And you can see we broke it here on the 15th. And then we did get a close over it right here, but then it kind of stalled out at the 15, 18 mark, as you see, which is this level right here. And now we're starting to get back over the 50 again, as well as we're still trending over your nine and 21 EMA combo, which is a good sign for a short-term uptrend. So we're starting to get over those moving averages, which is really good. I think overall it could have some room up to the one day 200 EMA, at least if you are trending under that and you buy under that, that is always a good price target to go with because it can act as resistance as well as it's kind of what everybody's looking for for a, a long-term trend. Everybody pays attention to the 200 EMA or the 200 SMA as well. So that's a good price target overall. Maybe with the holidays coming up, this and other retail names could be a good sympathy. I probably mentioned retail names a couple weeks ago before, you know, they kind of rallied just because a lot of them were at their bottom. And I mentioned it could be a good holiday type play for seasonality. And a lot of them have been doing pretty good. So hopefully y'all caught some of that. If you watched my videos a couple weeks ago, there was just so many oversold retail names. And it looks like JWN here is still at a pretty good valuation, I would say, in terms of where everything else is. Markets, you know, indexes, very overbought. But you can see it's got this trend line support, test one, two, three, four, bounced off four. And then you got the flat top resistance as well. This is almost like a pressure cooking type, you know, pattern that it could break out to the upside. I just need that close over 15, 18. So JWN looking at calls, obviously I'd maybe buy time on it just because it's already up 6% from Friday. And if you buy time on your contracts, drawdown risk is not as bad. So as for JWN, looking at calls, maybe buy time on them. And another retail name we're looking at here, this is gonna be Walmart. So this is a longer term trend line, I would say. This is all the way from June, 2022. You gotta test one, two, three. Let me have my cursor real quick, make it a little bit easier to highlight stuff. So you got test one, two, three. You probably even draw it like this as well. If you drew it like this, it would be test one, two, three, four as well. But you know, if you want to go with this one as well, that's good too. I feel like this one is the best because you're counting the low of this and you're counting the low of this point as well. And it looks like it reacted pretty good off of it just based off this one day, or I'm sorry, this one week bar came all the way down to 154s and still held it up. So if we go down to the one day, it held up our trend line pretty good. We do have a really big gap here from earnings. Go ahead and add that as well. That way we have it on our chart. So this is a gap, really big one, closed down 8% this day, the day after earnings. So very big move down and pretty much just straight into that longer term 2022 trend line from the June lows. So another thing I do like about this as well, you have your one day 200 EMA. So this green and red dotted area, it's your one day 200 EMA. Really strong support back from October, bounced off it pretty hard. Try to bounce off it right here, went briefly under it, but now we closed back over it on Friday. We got WMT closing up almost 1% while well, the markets, you know, basically closed flat. It's a pretty good sign of somewhat of relative strength. As well as we close back over the one day 200 EMA, that's another sign that I like. So just looking for it to head back up to the one day nine EMA maybe as a first price target. And then you wanna use the 21 EMA next as your second price target. Obviously we'll need to get over the gap resistance it's going to be right here at 159.45 so if we can get over that area as well they'll be looking pretty clean to start entering that gap as well as you know maybe bring some confidence to the market that this gap is going to start trying to fill obviously you want to see like a one day close inside of it and start seeing some momentum closing inside of it that gives it more confidence to start filling up the area so that's for wmt looking at calls obviously risk off or sl whatever you want to do it's going to be either under the trend line as a more conservative price target, it starts closing under this with a one day bar. Or if you wanna wait for a one week bar close under it for higher time frame analysis, you could do that as well. Stop out if it breaks that line. If you wanna be a little bit more aggressive, give it some more room, 151.65, this low right here from October 6th, that's a good kind of stop loss as well. If it breaks under that, there's a good chance it's gonna flush to this next structure at 145. So that's for WMT looking at calls and you got two different types of risk you can go with here either conservatively breaks under the trend line stop out or a little bit more aggressive 151.65 with a price target of 159.45 and or your one day moving averages which is probably going to be like 158 obviously this is going to change by the day so 158 21 ema is going to be probably like 160 but 
I would go with the 9 EMA and your gap resistance for the first price target. And onto some short plays or some bearish side plays. This is actually Roku. This, is a, this has a really big rally base drop supply zone. As you can see here, this bar up 31%. This bar up 7%. So this is a huge rally that led to a big sell imbalance. It came back up again, tested it right here. This is your one base candle that pretty much created your zone and it rejected very hard right there as well as it's kind of stalling out right here. Obviously, we don't have a reversal bar like this or even really a reversal bar like this. Really anything showing you that it's going to reject hard, which is why you might want to wait for this to get some type of one day rejection bar and then you could maybe look at some puts. But I do like this supply zone as a potential area to fall, at least see a short term pullback. Obviously, max low, I could see maybe 90, 22. This one day demand, it's going to be at 90, 14 on the dot. So that's the max low I could see if it does pull back here as well as you might want to wait for that one day bar or some type of higher time frame confirmation showing you a rejection and it could go low so roku i'm looking at puts on this but i do want to see a little bit more from it obviously if it starts breaking over 95 84 plus probably 99 flat or you know 98 50s that kind of start breaking out and you want to be careful with that but otherwise it's still staying under the supply this is a major resistance I want to see some type of short-term pullback on this. And obviously, I think the indexes would need to pull back as well. So this is really just a play if we start getting some volatility. Maybe the data comes in like crap. Maybe people will just start taking profits a little bit. This will be on the back burner. That way we can, you know, switch our bias and start looking for some downside. I already do have some spy puts. I think just some at-the-money 455 puts for, what was that? I think it was 1215 or the December monthly contracts, whatever that expiration is. I have one of those. Just paid like 500 bucks for it. Nothing crazy. Just a starter position. So I am starting to look at some puts in this market just because of the overextension. And I do want to see some type of little pullback that I can, you know, maybe buy and, you know, trade that seasonality in December to the upside. But I want to see a pullback first before, I, you know, I'm longing stuff up here. You know, if Roku pulled into this 9014, I would gladly buy the dip down here at this little rally base rally demand zone. It's a rally base rally. Pretty nice zone. So I'd buy Roku right there. But I want to add at the discount areas. I don't want to trade the breakouts, unfortunately. So that's for Roku. Big supply, big resistance. Need to see some type of one-day bar, some type of rejection candle, maybe a little bit more confirmation. You can see it's actually been you know, a pretty good short-term trade. You know, If you're trading short-term puts, it rejected right here. It rejected right here. It rejected right here on Friday. Probably could have made a killing on some zero-day puts just off this little move right here. So the supply zone is reacting, price is reacting to it. Just need to see a little bit more on the one day, you know, to see some type of actual reversal. So that's for Roku, be a little patient, maybe look for a little bit more from it before making a decision. And last but not least, we do have another put trade here. So this is at a major 7143 resistance. This is Shop, Shopify. And we actually kind of dig it somewhat of a decent candle. You can see it's a, I mean, it closed red. It's nothing crazy though. Like it didn't take out the lows of the previous candle. So no big reversal signal or anything by any means. This is actually just an inside bar. So what it will need to do is take out the lows of Friday to start going lower. So we just want to mark the low of Friday. It's going to be at 70.23, not too far below. So I'll need to get under the lows of that bar. It's going to be about right here. If you can get under that, obviously you have a Wick low here at 69.15. You get a wick low here at 68.16. Another wick low, 67.73. And a, almost a triple bottom type structure right here at 68.80s. Or I'm sorry, 66.80s. So if it does start closing under that, you will need to consider these short term levels because these short term levels have been a factor in what's been holding up Shopify. So Shop will be more of a short term play. Obviously, these levels don't look as pretty on the one day because they're so jumbled together, which is why you want to go down to the shorter term time frames. And you can see they're so much cleaner. You got wick low, wick low, wick low, three wick lows, almost four. One, two, three, four. Strong structure right here. So if this structure broke, that'd be pretty good. And then there's also this big gap down here. Obviously, I wouldn't be aiming that low with volatility this low. I highly doubt it would get down there in a week. Like I almost 100% doubt it, but it's the stock market. You never know. So that's for shop. Looking at puts, risk off is simple. Stop loss is above 71.43. Or if you want to just do like 72 maybe. Uh, if you're doing like a swing trade or like a further out type of put swing, 72 flats probably good as well. If it starts closing over 72, there's a good chance it'll try to break out. But those short-term levels I showed you are short-term price targets. As well as you could probably just use the one-day moving averages. So I could get rid of all these drawings here. 
you could just use the one day nine EMA. So if it pulled into 67 or something, obviously this is gonna change by the day. So it's gonna change after each one day bar. If it starts pulling into the one day nine EMA, that's a good spot to take profit. As you can see right here, it pulled into the one day nine EMAs, uh, the general area at least. This is a higher low to back test to a move higher. So if it did the same thing here, it pulled into a higher low for a back test, it could try to go higher, which is why you wanna take profit at the one day moving averages. You're basically capitalizing on the fact that we're so overextended over the moving averages that once it pulls back in, you wanna take profit at that area because there's a good chance it could hold as a higher low. So keep it simple. And then like I said, this 71.43 is a big resistance. This is also a big one day level at 67.60. You got the low right here. So that's all you're doing. Uh, for one day levels, just marking big inflection points like this. You got a nice little base right here. And then we got the gap. So just wanted to re-add these so you could see. That's pretty much technical analysis, just marking you know extreme points, places where prices turn very aggressively. And then I showed you the short-term levels earlier. Just keep it simple. Mark the wick lows. You got one here, one here. You got a structure low right here, which we already kind of marked at 67.60. And then you got triple bottom structure right here as well. So mark those for short-term price targets. But overall, I would look for the one day nine EMA eventually to hit and take profit there. So that's for shop, looking at puts, be patient, risk off over 72. And onto the SPY for the indexes. So last week we were focused on the supply zone. I mentioned it needed to break over that in order to get to 453.67. And 453.67 was my max, that's my max price target I could see with a potential to fill this gap. And I wasn't 100% confident that this gap would fill, but we literally broke out, broke over 453.67 and basically filled the whole gap all on Monday. So we did it in one day. So SPY just pretty much breaking all expectations and really any form of reality. So just been going crazy. But you could see how clean this was. I mean, this little black area is the free space. This area right here, it's your peak at 453.60s. And once it got over the supply zone high is just a straight shot and you got this one huge one day bar right here on monday so that's all we were looking for last week and then for bears obviously uh we needed some type of one day bar or reversal candle and we didn't get that so monday instantly invalidated the bears as you can see it closed i mean i guess you could have maybe traded puts the next day at 453.67 if we look at tuesday here it kind of went back under 453.67 but either way went back over and we even broke out of it here. So, and it filled the rest of the gap as well. And then this is when it got choppy. So now that we've filled that gap and also closed over 453.67, it's kind of like, what is next, right? I mean, we have a little bit more room up to 459.44. As you can see, this is that max resistance or max peak that we have all the way from July 23. So that is the max I could see it if it really did want to go higher. Although I really feel like it might stall out here or, you know, it's going to get that much needed pullback just due to the fact that vix is hitting 52 week lows it's kind of like a sign of capitulation for bears maybe as well as the cost to hedge is just so cheap right now why wouldn't people want to pick up puts here even if it doesn't pay out it's still good to protect your portfolio if you know if you're a majority long and you're a long-term investor on equities this is a good spot to start hedging maybe even taking profit just because we're getting up to some crazy levels here so like i said uh, the max i have for upside just 459.44 I really don't think we're going to get up that high this week, but who knows with PCE, if it comes in soft enough, we could get up there. I really feel like we need a little pullback down to the one day nine EMA at least. It's probably going to take you down to, you know, 450 at minimum. And also we would need to get under 453.67, kind of like what we saw on Tuesday, but there was no follow through on that. So even though it closed under it, we were still able to gap over that on Wednesday, even though it kind of slowed back off and just chopped the rest of the day. But we really need to get back under that for the bears. Obviously, 453.67 is a really big level. And we would need some type of one-day bar, something like convincing. Because even though we close under it right here, this was just an inside bar. So this is, this is just a consolidation bar that led to the gap up. Uh, this is kind of this is a pretty good candle to add at for longs. If it's already bullish and you get an inside bar like this, this is a pretty good setup to start going higher. It's just consolidation. And that's all the market does in uptrends like this. Just makes crazy consolidations. You got one right here, small pullback, rip. You got another consolidation right here, three days, rip. You got one day consolidation, small little gap up. And now it it's either going to stall out here or consolidate is my guess. I don't think it's really going to go too much higher. I mean, we could get one more big impulse up to 459, 44, but that's as high as I could see it. And I definitely don't want to long into this, which is why I went ahead and grabbed the one 455 put uh, for December 1215. And if we do get a little pullback to a higher low, I will be willing to add that and try to catch the Santa Claus rally for December. 
even if it's just one or two days, I feel like there will be a snapback. If it pulls back, it's going to pull into a higher low. People are going to add and it'll have one more impulse move to close out the year. So that's for SPY. Be really careful here. If you want to grab a put, maybe wait for it to get under 453.67. I got one on Friday, but I only grabbed one as well as I had some data from the last four years that showed the Mondays after Thanksgiving week tended to be a little bit more weak the last four years. But either way, like I showed you, seasonality is very bullish right now. 27th to the 28th, you could argue there's a small stall out right here, but it's still still going up into the end of the month, basically on all fronts here. And then pre-election years, it kind of does stall out here for, what is that, the Russell 1K, the S&P 500 pre-election, it kind of does stall out there. And then the Dow Jones pre-election for the black dots, that kind of stalls out as well. It looks like Russell 2K does really good, the Russell 2000, just small mid caps, and as well as the NASDAQ. Uh, it doesn't really stall out till the 29th, it looks like, based on history. But that's for this buy. Be really careful. Wait for it to get under 453.67 for an actual reversal. Or, you know, I definitely wouldn't want a long up here. Like I said, you might have a little more room up to 459.44. And that's about it. And for the QQQ, last week we were just focused on. I think 388. Bulls needed to take it over that to see some more upside. It was as simple as that. 388 was this peak right here. It was able to do that on Monday. And you can see, briefly got over it, pulled back from it. And then once we got back over it with this impulse candle, it was basically just a straight shot up on Monday. So this is a pretty good breakout play over 388. A lot of people waited for it to get over 388. Once it got over 388 with conviction, that's when you started seeing these big impulse moves, big breakout move to the upside. And then Tuesday, just totally shit the bed. Tech actually had a pretty weak day. Went back under 388, and then it closed back over it right here on Tuesday. Once it closed back over 388, we're able to get a pretty big gap up, and then just another gap in crap on Wednesday. So pretty crazy week, very in between levels. This week, it's basically the same thing. You need to see it staying over 388. 388 is your base. If it can make some type of base here, we can keep seeing impulse moves higher. Obviously, if this holds, it's showing a sign of strength. We're staying over the previous 52 week high and you could assume markets are still doing pretty well. If it starts falling back under that, simple as that, you could see some weakness. And then overall, it really does need to get under 385 or this 384.88, which is this peak right here. It'll need to get under that uh, to start filling this gap down right here. So I wouldn't be confident in a gap fill down until it starts getting under that 385. And I showed you that's this peak right here. So that's all you're focused on, basically. 388, which is this area from over here. It was also the breakout point for Monday. You got 385 or 384.88, this right here. And you got another peak right here at 380.83, which is also mid-gap. So if it gets under 385, that's going to take you to this peak right here, which is mid-gap. And I'll need to get under 380 as well to fill the entire gap. So that's basically your levels, just using recent peaks. We are kind of in a new territory here. It's the first time... We've been this high in a couple of years. Overall, the peak is right here from 2021. It's at 408.71, as well as there's a kind of a small peak right here at 404.58. But this area could fill up eventually, although I do think we might need a little breather before just blasting through this and going straight up, just based off what I'm seeing here. I mean, we are up from this low in October, up almost 15% just in, you know, one month here. So it might need a little breather, higher low, somewhere where big money institutions can add, and then they'll try to make the impulse move higher up until the end of the year. But we do need that pullback, I think, some type of weakness that we can add into before you know, chasing this. Obviously, you can keep scalping off 388. If it pulls into 388, that is a back test off of this, and it could bounce off that. So that's a good back test level to go off if you're day trading. For swing trading, you just need to see continued strength off 388 and a guaranteed hold over 388 which means you want to see one day closes over 388. And that's a really good sign. It could keep trying to march higher. If you want to keep it simple, just use the one day moving averages. Obviously, if it keeps riding this, you know, bulls are looking good. It starts breaking under the nine. The nine then takes you down to the 21. It's as simple as that. It's kind of what we're doing right now. We're just riding the nine and 21. Kind of pulled into it right here. Obviously, we didn't get it touched on the dot, but it was able to kind of get back to the area because it did need a rebalance. That's kind of what I'm expecting the market to do here. Just a short-term pullback into the one-day moving averages, make a higher low, and then, you know, it can go a little bit higher. We are at some crazy levels here. It's definitely not my favorite spot too long at. I like to add at the moving averages, 
some type of support or resistance that's going to be, you know, off 388 on the dot for a day trade, maybe 385 as well. That's a pretty good area to add or the one day nine EMA for longs. So that's for QQQ. Just be careful. 388 in focus. Same thing as last week. Make sure it's staying over that and you can see continued upside. If it starts falling under that, look for 385. If it falls under 385, look for 380. All right. On to the VIX. So last week we were focused on this close on Friday. I mentioned it closed under 1410. That was a pretty bullish close for the market. So you can see Friday here, our close is at 1381. So it closed under the 2021 low. And I mentioned last week that was pretty bullish for the market. And the next level you want to look for was the 1273 lows, which is your triple bottom support or your next volatility extreme point. And we did exactly that. So VIX fell pretty good. Obviously, Monday was really like the only good day to get a big move in the stock market on SPY and QQQ. Because after that is when it kind of got choppy. But that Friday signal did give a really good signal for Monday to be a green day. And I hope you can see that. The fact that it was able to close under that 2021 low is just indicating basically weakness in volatility and strength in the markets. And then all we did was just use this triple bottom support or low to come up with a price target or an area that it would likely try to grind down towards. And it did that plus more. So it's now under 1273. Closed at 12.45, which is crazy because the market didn't even do anything really on Friday. You can see we only got this one little candle towards the close. And then the VIX was just dumping heavily at the close. So there's a big disconnect between price and volatility just this whole day. Because price really went nowhere, as you can see. Well, volatility just straight dumped all day on Friday on the half day. So that could be a sign of just capitulation for the bears. People are not buying puts. There's just a lack of demand for hedging. It's also a pretty bullish signal in terms of if you want to see the market go up, the VIX closing this low and closing under, you know, the triple bottom support as well as closing under 52 week lows. You see 1245 is the new 52 week low. So the next level that I do have below, I had to go all the way back to 2019 to 2020. That's at 1142. So that's the max low I could see overall if it wants to keep falling here and keep grinding down. Although I feel like this could be just a fake move under the 1273 and we could see a spike back over the 1273 and it'll try to head back to 1410. That's just speculation. And I will need to see some type of move back over 1273 plus a one day close back over 1273 in order for that to come into fruition. So that's just my speculation that the fact that it did close under this finally, that could be a sign of capitulation and maybe it'll try to bounce back up. And now that hedging is at 52 week lows, the cost to hedge is at 52 week lows. That's a good sign that maybe people try to bid this back up and it'll try to get back over 1273. If it closes over that on the one day, volatility would just have a little short term spike, nothing crazy. And we'll see that little pullback in the market. But that's basically just what I'm expecting. Just speculation. I have no idea. And to make a better idea, you do need to wait for that confirmation. That's going to be that move over 1273 plus a one day close. And then you can assume that maybe volatility would try to bounce back up just short term. Nothing crazy. You kind of just want to take it one day, one level at a time. Your next level, 1410. If it does, start getting back over 1273 and spiking. That's just the max high you could look for. And then obviously there's more levels above that, but just take it one, one level at a time and that's it. And like I showed you, uh, the 2019 to 2020 lows all the way down at 1142. God, I really hope volatility doesn't go down to 1142. That's all I'm saying. The ATR will be so dry. You won't even be able to, you know, day trade indexes like that anymore. It's going to feel very slow. People are going to wish volatility came back if it goes that low. That's just ridiculous. So I'm hoping that, you know, volatility will come back. We do need a little rebalance, get the VIX back up just a little bit. And then, you know, they'll probably try to pound it back down again after that. But that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our extra YouTube channel. This week, two longs on retail, two shorts on high growth, high beta names, pretty much. So it is, it is kind of mixed because, you know, the, the markets, the indexes, there's just a bunch of things that, at resistance right now or near it and that just crazy, crazy levels. So that's why I have a mix this week. I'm kind of looking at calls and stuff more at a discount. You can see WMT kind of sold off. 
the past couple of weeks and JWN's kind of been near a bottom as well. But then Roku and Shop are kind of near, you know, local tops. Roku's at big supply, Shop's at big resistance. So that's the reasoning for that. And it kind of gives you options this week. If we do see, you know, Spy and QQQ pullback, we will have those shorts to work with. But otherwise, you know, JWN and, and Walmart's always kind of like a slow mover. So if the market does pull back for some reason, WMT, you know, won't get smashed as bad compared to, you know, other high volatility names or compared to tech. I feel like WMT is kind of like a safer long, I guess, while markets just at these crazy levels. If it did want to pull back, I feel like WMT wouldn't be affected as bad. And that's why it made the list for this week. That's really it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped up and sent out. I love you guys. And I'm out.